फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट अटेंडेंस is compulsory for everyone uh, which are scheduled on weekends and we will be keeping track of it uh, then second certificates will be given on the basis of attendance only and only top few students will get the opportunity for internships on the basis of tests and assignments there will be two tests for the scores one in the middle and one at the end and you you will be getting the schedule for this shortly i request you all to join the meeting that is hosted by vvi cam team members only and in case of any doubts please use the chat box do not unmute yourself until asked so keep posting your doubts on the chat window and so we will be taking your doubts one by one there will be half an hour session after every class like from 1 to 1:30 and then from 4 to 4:30 uh, so yes these were the few important points and apart from this uh, there was a concern for recorded videos uh, and we have got few mails as well so uh, regarding that we have decided that uh, we will be sharing a schedule with you all and in the given time slot uh, we will be sharing uh, we will be playing the video in the microsoft teams channel only uh like for example one of our team member will play the recorded video in the given time slot say uh, for the yesterday session uh, we will play that video on monday and tuesday like for the session from 11 to 1 we will play that video on monday and for the session from 2 to 4 we will play that video on tuesday and rest the schedule will be shared with you all and uh, this retelecast of sessions is open for everyone anyone can join it in this channel only uh, so yeah that's from my side uh, and in case of any further issues feel free to ask any of our team members and thank you uh, so we can uh, start with the session okay <clears throat> good morning guys i hope i am audible to everyone before starting i am just taking the uh, doubts because few people is asking some questions so somebody is ask about the nan and instance of so nan and instance of is basically if i start with this about blank so in instance of when we are using an instance of thing it is only comes in the picture when you create an object so for example if you are creating an object of array by using the syntax so you are creating an array and you can check it out by using type of array so it is saying i am an object and if you want to check is this object belongs to which type so it is belongs to this array and i told you array is not a class it is a function so you can check this thing so instance of is just checking this object belongs to what right so instance of is for the this, this thing and nan is comes in the picture for example if you have let's say variable e and suppose it has this kind of value and suppose you are going to type cast it parse int and then you are doing this e so it will give a nan right because t and cannot be convert into the numeric so it will give a nan so for this purpose the nan will come suppose this nan will be stored in let's say on f variable and you can check out f is a nan and if if you check out i just move this thing up and if i check out type of f it will say i am a number and there is a function called is nan through this you can identify is this thing is a nan or not right single is asking about the percent 10 comma 8 it is basically used when you use 8 it is something for octal 10 is for decimal so you if you want to parse something then you can specify uh, the 8 or 10 these kind of values right i hope guys this thing is clear so today wh what we are going to start today because we have some glance of javascript now we are going to implement this javascript on some mini applications first of all so today agenda is we are mixing with html css and the javascript 
we are mixing all these things together. Now, how we are going to mix this thing? So, Shagun is asking arrays both instance of array and object. Yes, because I told yesterday there is a on top of top level there is an object function that is on the top level, right? So there is a thing called object that is a top level function, and now array is is a you you can treat it like it's a child one. So when you create ARR, so ARR is an object, and this object belongs to this array, and this array parent is the object one. So when you check array instance of, I mean ARR instance of array, it is true. Array instance of object, it is also true. Right. So moving to the uh, important section of today, that is, we are going to create the first application. So I am targeting three mini applications. That is just to understand the functionality. I hope somebody mic is on. Vivek mic is on. Can you Vivek? Can you mute your mic? So the first thing we are going to start in this, that is in this JS, we are going to start with our first application. I just named this application as a greet application. So we start with this application. Through this application, we are able to learn the HTML stuff. We are learn able to use the VS code. We are able to learn something called Emmet style. And we are able to learn integration of JS with HTML, right? So HTML and JS, how they is in integrated. We are able to learn how the events will work. We are able to learn the DOM fundamental, right? So so many things we are going to learn in this, right? So we start with greet application. What is the design of this greet application? So I am just showing you the greet application will be look like this. It is asking for first name. So we have this label as a first name and we have a text box for this. So for uh, creating this label and a text box, so we, we are using something called label tag in HTML. So through label tag, you can create this label. And for creating a text box, we are going to use input type text. Right. So input type text we are going to use. Then we need to use last name and again the text box. And then the submit and let's say the reset part when we type first name and the last name we want to show welcome that that would become dynamically first name plus last name it is going to show and when it is going to show the first name and last name it will make the first letter as initial letter is capital so it means first name initial letter must be capital and the same thing for the last name right so we need to concat it Stay and the initial letter must be capital and the rest of the letter must be small. So this is the uh, thing we are going to target, right? And for making the button, we have the tag called button. We are going to use this thing. Now the the first point is, uh, we I'm just giving you a very basic glance of HTML, right? Because uh, in next session, we are more on the designing side, right? because how to design this uh, HTML and CSS stuff. But today, because we start with the JavaScript stuff and we learn some some sort of basic knowledge of the JavaScript. So we are going to integrate the JavaScript with the HTML. So I, I am just giving you some some knowledge of HTML if, if somebody is coming from the zero background of HTML, right? Ashish is asking any alternative Visual Studio. There are so many. You can use something called brackets. So either you can choose brackets but when I'm talking about the VS code, VS code is one of the best one. So there is very easier thing that is brackets. It is created by Adobe. So you can use brackets that's a, that is open source. You can use something called sublime text. You can use this one. It is very good, but usually good support in the Mac system. And then third is Atom you can use. So VS code nearby computer is Atom. So either you can move to Atom, right? So if you are not going to use a VS Code, right? But but when when I'm talking about the performance, VS Code performance is pretty much good compared to Atom. 
Atom has the same kind of functionality, but the performance wise VS Code is better. Plus it has a lot of extension. It has bigger community. So that's why I choose VS Code. Right. Because because it has very good features. Bracket is is uh, very, very easy to use. But the problem with the bracket is when we use React and Node, it would not support much more because it, it is not good for large projects. And when you're using uh, Node and React, it is much, much larger. So bracket will hang that moment of time. So you have if you have Windows system, you have a choice of Atom. You can use Atom. Right. So this is a, again a code editor. And if you go for license one, there is a ID on internet that is WebStrom that is created by a company called JetBrains. You can use this thing, but it is licensed, right? So that's why very few companies are using this WebStrom, and it is it is the IDE. I mean, it's an integrated development environment. It is more like Eclipse if you heard about, right? So it's it's a ID for developing web application, but it is licensed. That is the issue, and company want to use the open source. So we are moving to the thing that is uh, we start with uh, creating our page. This is the our page design we are going to use. And for this particular training, I am using the brackets. I also share the video link on your WhatsApp group. You can watch the video to get the hint how you can download this thing. Right. So moving to the uh, VS Code stuff, how this VS Code stuff will work. Start with this. So the first first thing for VS Code, like you need to use uh, <laughs> you need to use vs code download here right so if you just go here you can download the vs code from here and it is compatible for mac linux windows so if you watch uh, earlier the video so you know how to download it right if not so i'm just just give a quick recap of it so if you click on this download vs code because vs code is created by the microsoft and it is it is the open source right so that's a microsoft and it is open source so it's an amazing thing right and it is very popular it, it's next amazing thing right so microsoft open source and amazing right because it is working uh, i mean most of the developers are using it so it is compatible with all the platform it is built on top of electron js if you heard about electron js is for making the desktop applications with javascript so it is using the same technology Right. Rahul is asking, I lost the 45 minutes of yesterday. So Rahul, you need to do take some backup, right? And you need to contact the team, right? So uh, Windows or Linux or Mac, either whatever the system you will use, based on it, you need to just click and download it. So it is just simple as click and download. It is once it is click and download, you it's, you will get an executable file and you install it. Once it is installed, you will have like this. Like in my machine, there is a Visual Studio code. So if I open this, it would be like this. But I, I add some some more features in it. So I have a lot of themes I added here. So if if you're going to if you're going to use this thing, so I just I just want to show see the chat window as well as. So from here, uh, you are going to use this VS Code. VS Code has so many things which is coming up. Like uh, I I am using it. That's why it is showing these kind of stuff but if you are if you are uh, open this thing first time so that would be a first time it, it is showing you a welcome note so uh, i start with a very scratch when you open this vs code the first absolute thing you need to do is go to the file menu so go to the file menu and go to the open so treat this vs code as a notepad not trick it like some id because id is some bigger stuff so it is very very close to the notepad but it, it is very intelligent to write the code so it's it's like a code editor but it can behave like an id that's the best part of it so that's why it is pretty much lightweight because it it come comes up with very less features but you can add so many features by adding some extensions so i will tell you during the course what sort of extension we are going to use right so go to the file and then go to the open right section and in the so your open, screen is gone my screen is gone Yes, sir. Okay. No video. Okay, just a minute. Why? Why? Is it, is it now visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't know why it is yes, gone. Sir. Okay, just a minute. Okay. Okay. So, uh, 
I, I'm saying in VS Code, the first absolute need is just go to the file and go to the open section, right? And from this open section, just open a folder where you want to save your code. Make sense? So it is more like a notepad, right? So go to the file and go to the open section and then just go to some folder location. Like I'm using Mac, so I, I have a documents folder. You have D drive or E drive. So just go to some D drive, E drive. Do not save your code on some desktop location or some default location. I mean, in the in your user directory, because these kind of directories are most of the time write protected. So it means it is most of the time are the read only, right? Anubhav saying can't see my screen. Is it? Everyone facing this issue? So now it's visible. Not visible. I, I, okay, okay, but some some of them saying no, sir. It is okay. It's visible. Okay. Now the thing is, uh, all right. So from here we are in the document section. I just create a new folder, right? So I create a folder and I will named it BVP full stack, right? So I just named it this, right? BV, BVP full stack, and I uh, just do create. So this is a folder is get created and then I just open it. So it is as simple as you are creating a folder. So now your folders get open. Now your folder is get open. And if you see it, it is actually showing some of the information like it is showing this thing. There is a welcome note because you're using you're creating a new fresh project and it is showing this thing that is called Explorer. So Explorer is basically showing your files and folders here. So this is the place where all the files and folders, whatever you are going to create, it is going to show here. Right. So you're using this this thing and here this important thing that is an extension, this area. This is the extension, right? So it means any extension if you want to add, just click on this and any files you want to open. So just click on this. I mean, this is the Explorer. It means if you click on this, this Explorer will be show. If you click it again, it will hide. So it will toggling the Explorer. I hope this makes sense. So now from here, from here, I just close this welcome note, right? So I just close this welcome note and I am going to create our first file. To creating a first file, just do right click here and new file. This is a one choice or either you just click on this plus button, right? That's a new file and, and here is new folder. So if you are interested to create a folder or either you want to create a file, right? So I'm going to create with a file. So if I create a file, so I just named it index.html. Usually the convention is when you start creating a website, start with the file name called index.html because it's an entry level file. Remember this, it's an entry level. Most of the uh, servers like GoDaddy or AWS understand index.html is the entry file. So that's why I just named it index.html. So this, this file is get open. And if you see, it is showing some icon, right? This is the HTML5 icon, this one. And this icon, because I added some extension, that's why the icon is coming up. So when, when you start without extension, it would it would be a some uh, untitled sort of icon will become. But now it is coming this HTML5 icon and it recognize based on the HTML file, it is showing this HTML file icon, right? Now the point is how this icon is coming. This is coming again with the extension. So I need to download the extension, right? So I'm just showing you what sort of extension you needed. So click click on this extension. If I click on this extension, you you will be here. And this extension only and only work when you have internet connection, right? So if you are, your internet connection is not working, you, you are not able to download any extension because it is coming from internet. Or either you have some proxy setting in your machine or some firewall setting which, which is going to protect you. So if you have some free antivirus that will not allow these kind of things, right? So you need to off the firewall or free antivirus, right? So you need to just type VS code, VS code icons, right? VS code icons, this will be coming. So it is showing icons for Visual Studio Code. So it means this extension is created by Visual Studio team. So that is much more reliable. So if you, if you see, there are plenty of persons are creating so many things, but I am saying always refer VS Code things, right? So VS Code are, things are much more reliable, right? So for debugger, current, um, if you are using a debugger, so there are plenty of ways to debug. So it's not only one extension. If you just just look at look this thing, when I click on this run section, 
and you will see there is an option of debugging. I need to just configure in my launch.json. So no need to install any plugin for doing this uh, JavaScript uh, debugging because most of the time we are doing a debugging on the Chrome side instead of the uh, instead of the VS Code side. The benefit, the benefit you will get is if you do the debugging on your browser, think about it. You sell the system to some customer and customer is complaining. It is saying there are some issues I am facing. So you just access the website and right click and inspect and start debugging. So there is an option in a Chrome to debug it, right? So we will learn both of the thing. We'll use VS Code debugging plus browser debugging. But for JavaScript, I am preferring browser debugging. That is much more better, right? So even if you want to use a debugging, there is no need to add any extension. You need to just some changes on our launch.json. We will see what is launch.json. Right now we are just a beginning. So I'm just parking this thing. When we start creating a code, then we'll do some debugging thing, right? So now the point is from here, we are on this index.html and we understand we can install this VS Code icons and it is not coming install button because I already installed this. Once this extension is installed in your machine, just go to the code. So this code option would not come if you are using Windows. In Windows, they, this is this would be file. So inside the file, you will get the preferences. So in my code, I am getting the preferences. In preferences, I have the file icon theme. So just click on this file icon theme and choose VS Code icons, right? Choose VS Code icon. That's it. So your VS Code icons are unable now, right? So you are able to use this VS Code icons, right? So this is my recommendation to use VS Code icons, but there are plenty of icons provider. You can use material icons as well as. So you just go, uh, go to the extension and download the material icons, right? So you have the choice, but I am preferring this VS Code icons. I hope guys, this thing is clear to everyone. So from here, from this index.html side, I'm going to write my HTML stuff, right? Before writing this HTML stuff, if you if you are looking for some theme, because when you download this thing, it is it has their theme. So if you just go here, there is a color theme option and they have some predefined theme like light theme. This is the light theme. So if you just go in our preferences and color theme, so there are light, quite solarized, there are dark. So these these themes are provided by default. So if you are not interested on these themes, so you can download it like I downloaded Monokai theme. So Monokai theme is much more dark. So I, I personally like this Cobalt too. So it's all up to your choice. For, for example, I am using this Cobalt too. So if I click on this, so this would be the theme. Right? So if your theme is dark, so you can you can actually work more hours on the system because brightness is very less. Plus it would not consume more battery of your laptop. So even you want to interest it to download this Cobalt too. So it is not as much as compulsory, but if you like, so you can download it. So Cobalt too. So this is the created by the West boss. And again, install button is not coming because it is this extension is already I have. So in your case, the install button is there and you can install it. So now what, what you have, you have this uh, two things, VS Code theme, VS Code icon themes and Cobalt 2 themes. Both of them are enabled. Now time to start a code. So writing in HTML because HTML is hypertext markup language and this is basically used to designing a on, I'm not saying designing. I'm saying skeleton of a page. So it means if you want to create a structure of a page so you can use an HTML, right? So to making a structure of a page, you know, we start with something called HTML tag. If you heard about it, HTML is hugely inspired from the XML because first first they create uh, something called HTML. And once they created oh, sorry, sorry, first they create XML and some HTML is a subset of this uh, XML stuff, right? So that's why they have the tags, right? So in HTML, you have the major tag that is called head tag. You need this head tag and you need something called body tag. So say it's same like our body structure. We have the body and we have the head and head has all the intelligence. Remember head has all the intelligence. So we use scripts here. So it means whatever the script is there, we are going to write here. Somebody says, I can't see your screen. Is others are facing? Is my screen is on and off? Is is it? So your screen is visible. Is visible? Okay. okay. So might be some somebody is facing some issue. Okay. No issues. All right. So uh, HTML head and there is a thing called script 
and this script is basically it has a logic i mean if you want to integrate the js i mean js contain every logic so you use a script tag and uh, the essential thing is your uh, script tag is a part of head so, so so remember all the scripts in our head right the logic is our head not in our body right so body had the skeleton thing so body has the things called if i want to create text box or if i want to create a button so i use this button tag this kind of stuff right so it means if i want to design a button or i want to create a text box i want to create a label i want to create a check box i want to create a radio button all this stuff i will write in a body tag i hope everyone understand this thing right so i just start i am just assuming no one knows html that's why i am uh, just giving you the this baby steps i mean how these things are working now the pain area is the pain area is to open a tag close a tag i need to remember this thing that's why people do people hate to write html stuff because opening a tag closing a tag that's why people right now the people are using something not writing this this stuff they are writing something called emit so remember this word that is emit emit is basically a shorthand of writing html so i want um, you all guys learn emit so emit uh, through emit you will write your html in a shorthand way so your designing i mean the skeleton of your page will be much much faster right so i just start with a very basic emit syntax so you need to remember the syntax because it's a shorthand so i need to write this explanation sign and then i press tab when i press tab you will see this output is coming it means it generate the basic structure so start with the first line that is called doc type html like i told you html is coming from the xml xml has the tags right these tags has some order it means which one is the root tag which one is the child tag which tag can be repeat like html tag cannot be repeat it, it is coming only once it must be the parent tag right the boy tag no, cannot be repeat it is only by it, it is only once but button tag can be repeat thrice time five times 10 times it's all up to us so the point is somewhere somewhere it is written which one is the parent tag which one is is a child tag so everything is written in this doc type so it is written in doc type so if you just google google this thing that is doc type html4 i am talking about the html4 because in this course we are going to cover html5 stuff so in html4 that's an older version in older version you need to write the syntax called I, i'm just showing you this is the syntax we need to write right so we need to specify this stuff doc type and it is horrible if you just see doc type html public and w3c dtd html then space 4.0 in en fit then http some w3.org so the point is this is horrible because i need to remember everything and what is this dtd it is document type definition it is a document type definition it means the structure of the tag is actually placed here right so it is placed here the structure of the tag right so the the problem the problem is you need to write this second line if you are using html4 but if you are using html5 html5 is intelligent enough html5 says you just write this thing rest i will take care rest i will take care so swati is asking what is the latest version of html html5 so it means swati if you are writing doc type html it means you are using html5 right shreya i just started the emit so don't worry we are picking up i am just telling the html syntax so we are just starting it so we will learn emit things it means just just for this point you just remember emit is a shorthand of html it means if you want to write the html in a quicker manner you learn emit right and emit has their special syntax right i will share where you can learn the emit thing i hope guys this makes sense doc type html says it is always html5 but in earlier version you need to write this thing so it means html5 is, is is intelligent enough it know it know you are using html5 it means so diksha is saying how can we check our html version html is not installed diksha when you write the first line it is saying it is an html5 so it means in earlier version you need to specify 4 3 or something else but from html5 onwards they are just saying just write this thing and we when you write doc type html it stand for html5 and this is the last version right so they are actually saying I, we create this html5 on top of it we are just creating the standards so they are just doing the standards right so they are adding the standards in standards on the html5 right that's why they are not specifying html5 html6 here but in in older version they specified something called html4 and on html4 you need to specify 
the DTT. That is a data type definition file. I need to specify the location of it. But HTML5 is, is it, it, it is intelligent enough. It know when you write this thing, I am HTML5, and it is giving the responsibility to the browser. Remember this thing, it is giving the responsibility to the browser, look up the DTD file. It's your responsibility, it's not responsibility of the developer. So it makes our life easy. I hope guys you understand because anyway, I if I am a developer, I am going to write the HTML stuff. I am not interested to see where this DTD file is coming up. That's why they omit the syntax. Right. I, I hope this is clear. So Swati is saying if we don't write doc type HTML, do it will show any change? No. The point is. If you not specify doc type HTML, it is considered it's it's an HTML file. But but it is it is very good standard to write doc, doc type HTML just to communicate to another developer I am using HTML5. Right. Prank is asking so, sir for, for HTML5, we will write only doc type HTML. Yes, of course. Only this thing. Right. And even I am not writing this thing. I am saying just write this explanation sign. When you write this thing, so you will see it is showing. In this pop-up, this is called emit abbreviation. So it is saying when you write this thing and I do type tab, it will do this stuff. Right? So no, we don't need to install any extension for emit. Emit is by default shipped with VS Code. That's why I'm not telling it to download any extension. Right? So 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 far we have this emit syntax now. Just see the magic of emit syntax. For example, I want to create paragraph and you know for writing a paragraph in HTML, you need to just go to the P tag and you will write some paragraph, right? So suppose I want to create five paragraphs. I want to create five paragraphs. So you need P into five. That's it. Then you type P into five and then press tab. You will get this thing. This is the magic of this, right? So for example, if I want to create, let's say if I want to create a div, div is division right div is a division so for example if you are creating any website you have header section you have footer section you have left section you have right section you have centerized center section so you will divide your website in divisions right so there is a word called div so if i want to create a div and inside div i want to create another div and inside div i want to create a p tag inside p tag i want to create a span tag let's say span is inline tag so it means when you use p tag so P is block tag. Block tag means when you write a one P tag, the new P tag will become in a new line. I mean, whatever you write in a P tag on a first P tag, second P tag always append a new line character. But span would not append a new line character. That's why it is called inline. Remember this thing. When it is not, uh, it when it is not adding a new line character, it is called inline tag. So span is an inline tag. So it means whatever the thing, if you want to write in a same line use span right so yash is asking this thing that is div div is basically a division so it means if you are creating any website so you want to divide your website into the divisions for example your website has different different sections so this would be this would be your one div that's a header div right just a minute guys so this would be your header div this this would be your let's say left side div this would be your right side div this would be your center div and this would be your footer div make sense so it means you are dividing your website into different different divs so div is divisions that's why it is called div i hope this thing is clear now swati is asking p p stand for paragraph swati so it means when you use p tag and whatever the text you will write it is coming as a paragraph so in book if you see there is a, if you read some paragraph so it means it it has some their own alignment. So if you if you want to write your things in a paragraph manner, so if you write P and you write some line, so it would be get printed on the screen. So we will see how how the output will become. If you write another P, so another P will append a new line character. Remember this thing. It will append a new line character. So P is always called a block level tag. Remember this thing. It is called block level tag because it always append. It means a one P tag is ended up, so it will add a new line character. So if another P tag is ended up, so it will add another new character. Make sense? So it's a, it's a block level tag. Same div is a block level tag. Div is also a block level tag. P is also a block level tag. I hope this thing is clear. Now, uh, 
Prapti is asking span. Span when you are using a span. For example, Prapti, if I am saying P, and I am saying welcome, right? I am saying welcome, and this welcome, uh, I want to show welcome Amit, and I really don't know uh, uh, this Amit or Ram or Sham will become. It means it is coming dynamically. Think like it is coming dynamically. So welcome is static. So welcome is static thing. But the name, whatever the name is coming, it is dynamic. Now the problem is, if it is in the p tag, if it is in the p tag, I want to replace this on a runtime, on a runtime. So I will use p tag, and in span tag you will print whatever the thing will become. So span would not add any new line character. It means it will be on a same line. So it means it uses the same line of p. So it would not add a new line. So that's why it is called inline tag. So you need to remember there are only two kind of tags. One is block level tags which append a new line and there is another tag that is called inline tag which is actually doing which is actually putting on a same line i hope guys this makes sense so i i hope so you understand uh, what is the p tag and what is the span tag how it is different sandeep is asking something called section section sandeep section is something called when when you use a word called section or there is a, another word i want to highlight there is a, another word called header right there is another word called footer right so the point is when we use a div tag when we use a div tag to design header footer so we will see how we'll design it but the point is we will divide our website in divisions right so when we create everything is a division so how we identify this is a header this is a footer this is something else so we need to mark this div as an id right we mark this div as an id make sense so instead of marking this they provide something called semantic so html5 provides something called semantic tags semantic tag says you will write header so it does not create header remember it does not create header if you write section it would not create any section it just give a name it means inside this tag you will write a code of section i hope sandeep you understand this thing so that's why it is called semantic tags so it is the same like a div but it give us it it give a meaning to this right so it is giving a meaning to this it means it is saying this inside this header tag you will write the header code inside the footer tag you will write footer code earlier before the html5 people are using the div tags to create a header to create a footer and to identify this is a header this is a footer they use something called ids right so we will see how this is working because we just started right and um, now i am talking about next question there is uh, rithik we have to specify the div and how so uh, we'll see because i just started and everyone is asking about the div so I, i'm saying when when i just write some code then it would be uh, you can see what is the div what div is going on right and uh, what about the meta tag meta its name says it's a meta information so for example if you want to create any website which is uh, which is suppose uh, working on responsive site responsive means it will work on a mobile it will work on the laptops it will work on a large panels so we we use a meta tag and we specify something called viewport so we will learn this thing i am just parking this thing we will learn this thing when we are learning the css stuff right and when we are learning the stuff called bootstrap right so uh, i just want to uh, clarify one thing guys because uh, because you have lot of questions in your mind and here and there questions because somebody is ask, somebody is also asking something for the bootstrap so the point is this is not right time to talk about the bootstrap stuff this is our time to understand the basic html right so right now i am just uh, talking about the bootstrap uh, sorry the html stuff so, so that's why i am not talking about uh, the responsive side so just to clarify the meta tag is for the meta information of your website and the meta information can be your website would be responsive meta information is also used for the digital marketing purpose so if you if you host your website and you want your website would be come in a google search so you know you need a keywords there if you want your website will, will be work for english hindi german spanish so you you use a utf it utf is universal text format right i hope i answer the question vikas is asking section is also block level yes section is also block level so abhishek i just park your question form tag we will see later because we just started right think about some some of them really don't know the html right so once we go to the form section we, then we will learn right because we are just started it span is 
doing is basically in line i told you whatever you will want to write on a same line use span tag when you want to write something in a new line use p tag or a div tag right i hope guys you understand this thing i i hope i answer every question now i am just moving to my code level so i am not talking about right now with a div or a p or a span i am just talking about the emit i am saying when you use a div so you use a div for creating a division right dipika just focus on div is basically used to create a block level block level i told you block is for the new line so when when you want to print everything in a new line use div or p type p kind of tags so there are plenty of block level tags if you want to print in a same line then you use span tag which is inline tag so th this is the only difference block new line in line same line right that's why it is in line so I, i just want to show you the thing is if i use the thing called div div and then p and then span so i just want to show you when we use a greater than sign it is it is just saying you have div and greater than says child so you have another child tag it means div inside div inside p and then inside span and when i press tab you will see like this kind of output so it means if you want to design your uh, page in a earlier manner you need to remember the emit syntax i hope guys this makes sense right same thing is we can do it for for example if i want to create a table right so there is a tag called table and inside table if i use table and then tr says for table row and then i say td td is table data i mean it is a cell right and if you want to create a cells three times so you will write into three so it means you want to create td three times right and then if you want to repeat rows i mean you want to repeat rows also so i am saying into four so what what does it mean it means a one table with four rows that's why i multiply with a four and each row has three cells right so tr means i told you that's a table row right it's a table row td is table data so it means row you i i hope everyone knows this thing rows basically when you create a table so this thing is rows so this is actually created by the tag called tr and this whole thing is called table and the td is this cells which is created so that is the td part right and if i want to create a table with uh, tr so it means i am creating a table row and then i am going to create a table cell and i am repeating the table cell three times and i am repeating the table row four times right so it means it will create four rows with three columns make sense and it is a shorthand so wh when we write this thing when we write this stuff so i just saying into four and i press tab it will generate this much of code right i hope this thing is clear guys so i hope tr is clear th dipika is basically table heading so if you want to create headings then you use this td is something for table data so it means in in your first row you want to place some headings then you use th right so when we run this stuff when we, how we run this stuff that, that's a point so to run this stuff you need to install a one extension that is called live server that is the extension you need to download so live server is actually creating a illusion of a server so it will it will show you your application is running on server so if you heard about the server name tomcat or ias or apache these all are the servers so it will provide you a temporary server so you can run your application on your server so live server and you need to just click on install then it will be get installed it is already in my machine that's why install is not coming up so just do right click here and click on open with live server that's it when once you click on this thing your application is running but output is not coming why why so the output is there but we have not fill anything in the table so if i am going to fill something in table let's say like this to 1001 and let's say some salary and let's say 1002 let's say this thing let's say this thing right so i just fill two of them rest i will delete so if we just see this is the output is coming on your server so your server is running on your local machine 127.0.0.1 5500 is a port number 
so what is port number so port number is basically where your application is running so it means in 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 your machine you can have tomcat server you can have uh, is server you can have oracle server you can have mysql server so all the servers are running on the same machine but on a different port so port represent the application right so it is 550 represent it is live server port it is a live server port right if it is 8080 so it would be a tomcat port i hope this makes sense if it is 3306 it is a mysql port if it is 1521 it is a oracle port so we are using this thing so we have this port now this table is coming but row and column is not showing so if you want to show the row and column we have another option called border equals to 1 right so this is uh, ritik is asking we can run at localhost ritik is it is a localhost this is a name of local i mean localhost is a english name and 127.0.0.1 is actually the ip thing right so if you just look up the localhost localhost always says 127.0.0.1 right so it is more like when you use google.com google.com has their own ip so it's just it's just a name makes sense guys i hope this thing is clear to everyone how this table is created and how it is showing so we we have just understand how to write some basic html stuff right so our objective is we understand the vs code we understand some of the extensions we have used and we understand how to write the basic html right along with emit along with emit now you want to learn emit code so i am recommending always go to emit cheat sheet right so this emit cheat sheet is like a farra right so it means you use this emit sheet and it has every command right so whatever i am going to write so you follow this cheat sheet and it has every syntax so like greater than means what multiplication means what with example plus means what right so because i learn all this cheat sheet thing so i am recommending guys remember this cheat sheet so i am sharing this cheat sheet link on your chat window so everyone have this link save this link for your for your future reference purpose and whenever you are going to write any html stuff just download this htm download this sheet make a print out of it and just paste it on your desk right and then whenever you are doing coding just see the syntax so at least one week of time you will remember all the syntaxes and it will make your life easy because you are writing the code in a very very fast manner i hope guys this makes sense how you can learn the emit syntax right so the point is we are actually going to start our first application that is a greet application so we have the brief of everything so we are going to learn some basic html stuff and we are going to cover up the div p tag h1 tag input tag form tag button tag all these tags we are going to cover with a one example right so the the point to be understand is the html is providing a tag and it is more like ratta right so you need to remember ratta is remember right so it means you need to do rat, the ratta of this tag and the, the remember of this tag is only possible when you do the practice make sense guys i hope guys uh, this thing is clear so html is like a as a cake walk right it's not hard like java not so much syntax tag says their own story like table says i am a table p says i am a paragraph div says i am a division right button says i am a button radio button says i am a radio button so it's like this so it means it is pretty pretty much easiest thing so we our main focus is not on the very easy thing our focus is on the uh, bigger thing right so that's why i just kick start the html but uh, the coming saturday uh, we are going to start the thing called html and css so the core focus on the coming i mean the sunday because saturday i think it's a independence day holiday so sunday is uh, we are going to start uh, the thing called html and css it, it means the more focus on the designing less focus on the code but today is opposite more focus on the code because we learned javascript yesterday so we are going to implement the javascript otherwise we forget everything right that's why i i include html because why i include html because i want to see the output right i want to see the output what i am going to make so we engage html with javascript less design less design more code but in a next in next sunday time we have very less code but more design so the focus is on the more design side makes sense guys and that session is taken by a designer so uh, ravi sir he is actually prepared 55 website he designed 55 websites so he is going to take up 
the html and css session that is only on the designing side so the focus is only the designing right so now the point is okay you want heading on each row so <laughs> you i think you need to just remember the thing that is if i'm putting a heading on this so this is a comment guys this is a comment you need to write in explanation and hyphen even this is a comment so i'm putting a comment here and from here i am writing uh, this is a table row makes sense so this is a table row and i i think on line number it's a table it says i am a table td says i am a table data right it's a table data body says i am a body right so head says i am a head so meta says all the meta information so you need to remember this thing that's important in future because meta says uh, it contains some meta information which is not used for the end user because end user cannot see so it is for making your website responsive so if you want to make your website responsive responsive means it will work on mobile tablets laptops it means it will be adjusted on the on the base of the device width that's why you will see device width but we need to write lot of things here right i hope this thing is clear so shweta is saying uh, she missed some thing because of the network issue so shweta you need to contact to the team they will help you for a backup classes right so if you miss a lot of things due to, due to the network section right so the thing is guys meta tag has something called responsive it means you can make your website responsive as well as this the first thing that plus thing is you can do the seo seo is search engine optimization so you can you can maintain the keywords plus you can create the website which is internationalization i18n in short internationalization means you can you can use utf8 so your website can be on hindi english german spanish any language so that's why there is a thing called meta tags right so that's why it is important for the developer perspective but not for the end user perspective so somebody is ask with without bootstrap we can make responsive bootstrap is what bootstrap is basically a, a css3 framework remember this thing it's a framework on written on top of css3 so it means in this course when we learn the css3 so you are actually making your website responsive that is a plan for the coming week so you use a css3 to make your website responsive bootstrap is for those people who don't know the css3 they want to use the predefined classes i hope i answered your question ritik is asking if we can if we have to change the server and how we can change it by default you have this license over it because it is not php or node right now or not like java so we can have plenty of servers we have the live server which is an extension here right so if you want to change a server so you need to install there is an another server called light server but that is not a extension you need to uh, run it by a command line so extra effort will be get included you need to download and then you need to learn the command and for here we need to just do right click and run so because you are just a startup so i believe you use this thing right click and run right so for startup purpose it is very good thing chetan is asking meta responsive in seo responsive is basically chetan when we create any website for example if if let's say i am going to open some website which is responsive um let's say i am going to open this angular.io right this is responsive one so if i Uh, go to the inspect section if i go to the inspect section if you see this website is get adjusted within this section so you have this toggle device option and in the toggle device option you have the phone sections if you just see there is a phone sections right and this phone section has so many kind of phones right so for example i want to run it on iphone x so this is the theme of iphone x right so it is showing this website is responsive to iphone so this this is the meaning of the responsive website it means making a responsive website you need to learn the css3 media queries so just just for this moment of time remember if you want to create any website which is which can be adjust on laptop or mobile or tablets you need css3 right right now we are on html so we are not talking about the css3 so bootstrap is an answer for making responsive so in meta tag you you will specify i want to build a responsive website so i will specify viewport viewport means what is the viewing area so i'm saying by default the width of my website is always 100% 
based on the device width so if if i am running my website on mobile so it will take 100% width of mobile but if it is running on let's say on let's say 55 inch led tv so it will take 55 inch i hope chetan i answer your question now the seo thing is seo basically is for if you want to rank your website on internet so you need to use something called meta and inside the meta there is a thing called so most of the seo guys is using this thing so meta and name equals to something called keywords so they use something called keywords and inside the keyword they will specify a lot of keywords right so google actually searching the keywords so for example if somebody somebody search mall stack course on internet so most of the websites which is selling the course they have enter the keyword mall stack course so based on it google just rank the websites based on the usage and land it to your website right so that is for the seo thing i hope this is clear so uh, bhartwaj is asking li- for live server run internet is must for live server you need to install that moment of time internet is must once you install it then internet is not required to install the extension you need an internet i hope guys this is clear so pranshi is asking so meta tag has lot of thing pranshi it is just i am just uh, telling two to three th- things there are a lot of things you can even specify the description also right so uh nifty is asking should i install chrome live server web extension yes you can install this thing but i am recommending uh, you install it from here i believe you are installing from this side only not from the chrome side right pranker asking utf8 means pranker utf says you un- it is universal text format it means if you want to write hindi language i mean inside the p tag if you want to write this thing like this i am writing p tag here and for example i want to write google translate i just go here because i i cannot write hindi directly because i do not have hindi keyboard so i just go and write english here and translation i want in hindi and here i am saying hello how are you right and uh, you just copy this thing and just paste it inside the p tag paragraph tag save it and just go here and uh, go to your where where it is this thing and this is your output right because it is utf it so it means you can write any it means it is not mandatory to write only english So when you specify UTF-8, you are saying my website can be on any language. It's a meta information, and we are telling to the browser. I hope guys, this makes sense. To run code on the live server, the only step is first of all install the live server, and once it is get installed, just do right click and open with live server. That's it, right? Right click and open with live server. I hope guys, this thing is clear. okay so uh, moving to the next things so so far so good we have done some some of the basic stuff now we are behind this thing we are going to create this this first page right so we are going to start with the first page so let's start so focus on this thing because we are going to create our first code with javascript along with javascript so plenty of learning plenty of learning in this right so i i just uh, commented out this thing just for your reference what we have de- did here so i just commented out this stuff just for your reference purpose so uh, this comment is in between so i need to comment it out this stuff also okay so either i need to remove it i i just make it undo i am not uh, using this one uh, because i am going to create a new folder that is for greet app right this is the name of our application so i just create a greet app folder i just close this file just for your reference purpose it is just for our learning purpose and inside the greet app i will create a file called index.html file right so this is inside the greet app makes sense and i just do emit and i have this stuff and from here i am writing h1 h1 is for heading right it is for heading so there are h1 to h6 heading h1 is the bigger one heading right h6 is is the smaller one heading so here i am just giving a heading called greet app so what does it mean just run it and we will see the output so it's showing like this right 
so but if it is h6 it is coming in a small form so heading one is the bigger one heading six is the smaller one i hope guys we understand what is the use of h1 to h6 so there are six kind of headings right so i specify the heading here and from from here i am going to write the code okay so is my voice is breaking guys no sir it's fine okay dipika I, you need to check on your end right so uh, i think prenka you are asking something uh, creation of folder is it from the beginning so i just create a folder by doing just right click new folder or either you just click on this folder so once you do right click and new folder go to the folder go to the folder and do right click inside a folder and create index.html so i have this index.html and in inside index.html i just type this emit and inside this emit i just specify h1 just for heading and i specify greet app makes sense so we have this greet app now the thing is absolute need is we need to show first name and the last name in the, these two text boxes that is our need right so i told you this first name and the last name be th these two are the text boxes and before the text boxes we have the label right to place a label there is a tag called label it's it is this thing so if i do label and then i press tab so label tag will be get created right ayush is asking how you emit it for default html code default html code is exclamation sign and then press tab right so on your keyboard on one when you have a key called one on top of one there is an exclamation sign then you press tab you have the basic html structure i hope guys label is for label thing and because i want to create a label as well as text box remember this thing i want to create a label as well as text box so label and text box are sibling they are not child they are siblings because they are on the same place and to write the sibling to write the sibling i will write label plus input remember this thing so for child there is a syntax for greater than and for sibling there is a syntax called plus right so label plus input it will create a sibling so just press tab it, this will be get created and inside this label tag i will write first name make sense so i will write first name just see the output it would be like this first name along with your text box i hope guys this thing is clear right no command for running a project just save it this is the benefit of this live server it automatically refresh this a beauty of this right so you need to just save your code right prapti label plus input is plus i told you plus is for the sibling right plus is for the sibling sibling means both of the tags on the same place when you use label plus input when you use this thing label plus input so it means both of the tags on the same place it means label is not a parent input is not a parent they are cousins you can say so when i use label plus input you will see these two tags are coming parallel right label tag is just for labeling right it is just for labeling they want to so so if we let's say this is the label if you have input so in label i not specify anything that's why the only input box is coming so in this label tag if you specify what is the label of this text box so first name so it, this first name will be coming up i hope you are sure this thing is clear so rahul if your live share is not working might be you have some extension added on the chrome which is preventing this thing right so you need to just check this out so you just can google this stuff might be something because it is an auto if you if you understand this thing it is an automation in your machine because live server is taking the control of your machine and it is saying whenever you make a change i will refresh your browser so that's why that's why it is called automation when this thing is become an automation the problem is uh, your antivirus says it is some malicious activity firewall says it's a malicious activity so that's why i am i am always recommend to the students do not use any free things in your machine so like we use some free things free license key so that will disturb these kind of stuff so you need to check around either you have some extension which is disturbing or either you have some security reasons in your machine which is actually actually not allowing this thing that's why you need to do manually refresh i hope now this thing is clear that's why this behavior is not working vikas asking label plus input is inline block no it is basically uh, 
oh, in, you are asking label plus input yes label plus input is in line because label and in front of input it is coming so if you don't want uh, label will be on top of it so we use we use css for this just to do the customization i mean css is for the designing purpose where we use the css stuff then it will become on top of the text box right uh, aditya i do not have label coming up live server which label you are saying this label tag you are saying aditya because this label is something for html right so you need to write label plus input so this is html right so you, you need to just write label so label plus input right this thing is coming up so it it hinting out right it is hinting out and then press tab that's it that's it. this is the only thing you need to do right if you misspell something then the hint would not come if you put some space then it would not come right i hope uh, aditya this thing is clear and i have keshav is saying the same thing anubhav for is basically says uh, i think i will answer your question when we learn id field here right so we will learn id then i will answer your for i will remember this thing right because it is associated with id right now we don't know the id so uh, if i start talking about the id thing so people are will confuse so i i park your question and i will pick when the id will come so label for just park it and in here label you will write first name makes sense so you have the first name thing and this is coming up now the thing is if i copy paste the same stuff i if i copy paste the same stuff and i will write last name so it would be like this thing it would be like this so but i want to print last name in a next line so i will use something called i will use something called break line so i will use something br that is the break line right so break line is actually adding a new line character make sense guys so now after this after this i want to put a one more break line br and from here i will want to create a two button so button into two will create two buttons right and the first button i want to show uh, submit just submit this thing right or i will say instead of submit i will say greet right so this is a greet button and next button i want to say let's say it's a reset or clear all right so this would be like this makes sense sen is asking something about without label because i think sen tried this stuff i hope this stuff he, he has tried i am ne never recommending this kind of stuff because this is directly in your body tag so think about i want all the labels must be in a yellow color right so how you will do a color on it but if it is on label so i can apply css on the label make sense so guys uh, make this practice never write your plain text without any tag like this first name is a now part of the body tag so so same thing the last name would be a part of the body tag and suppose i am saying make all the labels in a yellow color you cannot because these tags are now independent i mean this first name and the last name it is not inside any tag so they are independent but if these things are inside some tag these things are inside some tag so i just make it undo and i just show you some example so if i do this thing suppose and uh, and my customer want i want to show the labels in some different color right so i can do the styling on it so i can do the styling on it so i will use something called style right and i do label i do label right and inside the label i i can have the style let's say color and i am saying make this color red or yellow something else right so you will see the label all of the labels are coming this i hope send i answer your question why i use the label right so it means without label anyway you are going to print the first name last name but if it is inside the label so i i have the option to do the customization so i have the style tag and in in style tag i can mark a labels as a color red right that's why i always recommend your plain text always in some tag 
right shagun i just park the four because uh, anubhav is asking the same question so four i just park it right now we will see when we learn id field right when we learn id attribute then then we will learn this so what is the use of attribute in label the, i i think the same question is the for attribute you are asking for just park it right now now there is need again to click on run somebody is asking need again to click on run with live server if changes in code or either you just refresh your page once you save it and then refresh it some some moment of time guys when you when you are doing some changes and if you just see here there is a white dot is coming up this white dot says you your code is not saved so first make control less then the code is saved so white dot is gone then the changes will be reflected right i hope guys this thing is clear so might be this this would be happen if you not save the code and you are keep running the the thing so pranka is asking if you want to make space between greet and clear yes it is possible you have something called ampersand nbsp semicolon this is for the space so if you want to make a space so an ampersand nbsp so it will put a space there right somebody also answer shay is also answer thank you shay so uh, there is something keshav what want to share label name is not showing okay so keshav have you used the label tag and inside the label tag have you written this this stuff inside the label tag can you check this thing i also check your code is saved right okay now ajay is also asking i have made the greet form but when i display the message which message ajay you are displaying and how you are displaying through javascript or uh, something else right so moving i am i am third time i'm saying the four we will learn guys just concentrate because that's a third time i'm repeating we will learn the four tag right when we learn the id so just focus it so the key is because you are you are just you all our guys are the freshers right right and i'm just giving you trainings for example when you are in a company there would be training again and that training is not repetitive training right so if you're focus the key is to learn the big bigger things it means if you want to be, become a very good developer or if you want to become uh, a successful person in your life the only mantra is always do the concentration right so if you are very very much concentrate in everything you will learn everything right so because so, some of the questions are keep repeating i mean three three times or four times i am talking the same stuff so it is might be of lack of concentration so can't we use br instead of nbsp no probably because when you use br br is for the new line nbsp is for spacing right okay ajay is sharing the code i am just checking out what ajay is facing uh, <laughs> ajay you are using for f name okay id with for f name right so uh, and you are not able to see what you are not able to see the label is it is this your question i mean the label is not coming up can you refresh your page because anyway you specify the label in the first name and then label is the last name so it must be it show this thing right the whole form is disappear when you click on the submit i think right is this it means when you click on the submit na so uh, why you are using a submit button because submit is actually need to submit on a uh, on a server right so there is no need of submit that's why i use a button there is a huge difference between a button and submit right that's why it is happening i hope i answer your question hmm all right now 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 i am moving so i just do not use submit right now because use button there is a huge difference between the button and submit 
So moving here, we have at least we have this form right now. I hope everyone understand this code. What is the, what is the use of this? Now, now the first bottom line is we need to pick the text box, right? We need to pick the value of the text box. This is the first thing. So if we go to the design, the actual thing is if I'm going to write here uh, the name, let's say I'm going to write Amit here and I'm going to write Shrivastava here. And then I click on submit, it will show Amit plus Shirvastava, right? So the point is the first absolute point must be in your code is I need to read the text box. I need to read the value of the text box, read the value of the text box, right? Now the question is how? Might be some of you know this thing, but I, I will uh, give you more detail how this thing is happening because as a developer, you must know. I write this code, but why I write this code? That is much more important, right? So read the value of the text box. How? This is the first question. So once we read the text box value, then we need to store it somewhere, store it in some variable. So this is just an algorithm. I'm saying so store it in some variable and then do something called init capital. It means the first letter must be capital and rest of them automatically get small. And the fourth thing is display it, display it on top right this is the algo we need to write right but for this we are going to learn so many things so the first absolute need is the first absolute need is how we can read a text box so for reading this text box remember most important points just do right click and go to the inspect do right click go to the inspect and from here i just go to the console section i go to the console section and I remember the some major important points. So I'm going to highlight the first number one first point that is in console. We have an object called window. We have the object called window guys. Window represent the current tab. Remember this thing window represent the current tab. It is an object, but it always represent the current tab. So current tab is this one. So it is give information of this window, right? So window is a global object. Remember, it is a global object, right? How? Just check it out. Type of window. It is saying I am an object. And this window object is an instance of capital window. Make sense? And capital window is basically the capital window is a function. Right? It is a function. Make sense? So the point to be remember, window is an predefined object. And this object is always belongs to the current tab. Now we are on the tab right now, right? Now we want to reach to this whole screen. So how we'll reach? We will write window dot document. Make sense? So when when I write window dot document, so document, if you write document, you will see the entire page is get blue. So this whole thing is called document. Make sense? So this whole thing is called document. So we have a predefined object called document. Now inside the document, we have something called dot get element by tag name. We have something called get element by tag name. Suppose I want to pick the tag called input. I want to pick a tag called input. How many input tag I have in the code Two input tag input type text one time input type text two times. So window is a tab document is a page. And inside the page, I am looking for a tag called input and input has two tags. Remember input has two tags. It is giving the array. It is giving the array. And remember, it is not an array. Every square bracket, every square bracket in JavaScript is not an array. Remember this point. Every square bracket is not an array. So if you just see it is an HTML collection. So it is differ from array. Make sense. And I want to store this result in some variable. Let's say in R, right? And I want to see what is R. So it's an object. It is an object of array. No. So it will say no. It means false, right? It is saying it is an object of HTML collection. So it is saying yes. Make sense? So R is an object of HTML collection. So I hope we understand how to fetch these two text boxes. So if we, if I just type R, so you will able to see there are two text boxes. So if I place a cursor on it, so it will highlight the first text box. If I place a cursor on the second, it will highlight the second text box. So it means it pick two text boxes. So the bottom line is whatever the thing you are going to create in HTML in JavaScript, it is represent as an object. Remember this point, whatever the thing you are going to create an HTML by using tag, but for JavaScript, it is an object. 
सो टेक्स्ट बॉक्स इज एन ऑब्जेक्ट लेबल इज एन ऑब्जेक्ट पी टैग इज एन ऑब्जेक्ट बॉडी टैग इज एन ऑब्जेक्ट सो एवरीथिंग इज फॉर जावा स्क्रिप्ट इट इज एन ऑब्जेक्ट आई होप गाइज दिस मेक सेंस सो वी हैव अंडरस्टैंड सो फार विंडो डॉट डॉक्यूमेंट डॉट गेट एलिमेंट बाई टैग एंड वी हैव रीच टू द फर्स्ट टेक्स बॉक्स बाय पुटिंग आर जीरो सो इफ आई टाइप आर जीरो आई एम ऑन द फर्स्ट टेक टेक्स्ट बॉक्स इफ आई प्लेस अ कर्सर हेयर आई एम ऑन द फर्स्ट टेक्स्ट बॉक्स इफ आई डू आर ऑफ वन सो आई एम हेयर राइट नितिन वी आर जस्ट लर्निंग इट फर्स्ट यू लर्न दिस थिंग्स देन वी आर पुटिंग इन अ स्क्रिप्ट टैग राइट इफ यू डोंट नो दिस थिंग वट इज विंडो वट इज डॉक्यूमेंट बिकॉज वी आर राइटिंग हेयर विंडो डॉट डॉक्यूमेंट यू आर एबल टू सी ओके दिस डॉक्यूमेंट इज अ ब्लू सेक्शन इफ आई राइट गेट एलिमेंट बाई टैग यू आर यू आर एबल टू सी ओके इट विल गिव एन एर ए एंड इट इज ऑफ एस्टिवल कलेक्शन राइट सो फर्स्ट एवरी थिंग इफ यू टेस्टेड इट हेयर देन यू क्रैक द इंटरव्यू इफ फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई एम टेकिंग द इंटरव्यू आई एम आई एम ऑलवेज एक्सिंग एक्स आई एम ऑलवेज आस्किंग द थिंग वट वट गेट एलिमेंट एलिमेंट बाई टैग नेम इज गोइंग टू बी रिटर्न इज इट द एरे most of the most of the students says yes it is an array but if somebody knows this thing it is not an array it is an html collection who knows who already done this thing that's why this is the beauty of the javascript you will write here and you will see every changes here right so prapti is saying get element by tag name prapti just uh, just fit just see this thing its name if you just see the english thing is it is saying get elements it means you your page document represent the page right document represent the page thing so this is representing this whole section right this is the page window represent this tab right when i am writing get elements get elements so it means page can have lot of elements if you see this is element 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 so i am saying get elements by tag name so it means in all tags i want to access only particular tag that is input so it is going to access input tags and how many input tags we have two so it will return an array right array like thing so it is returning array like thing so when we write this window dot document dot get element by tag name input it is giving an array in inside is this but this array is of which type it is of html collection type so we will check is this an array so it is saying no i am not an array i am an html collection right i have an html collection so how i can fetch it so if i use r of 0 so i am on the first text box and when i am writing r of 1 i am on the second text box i hope i answer everyone question sen i hope you understand this thing i i hope you understand prapti what is this get element by tag name i hope nitin you understand why we are not, not writing in a script block why we are learning it here okay okay thanks nitish for your comments so uh, now i am uh, i am here r0 we understand r1 we understand now the point is because i am on r0 r0 is what r0 is a text box believe it text box has lot of things text box can have the value text box can have the font styling right text box has the size so that's why the text box it means r0 give you a text box right input box i mean so input box is represent as always as an object right so this one text box is an object another text box is an object button is an object label is an object greet app is an object so everything for javascript is an object make sense so it means you, you, you can you can think like the point is your document because where you are you are in this document this whole area is called document and document contains what document contains objects documents not contain text box radio button check boxes headings no everything is an object right that's why javascript named it dom javascript says this is a dom dom means document object manipulation because you are doing document object and you are manipulating it that's why it is called dom i hope guys this thing is clear so it means what the syntax we are learning this syntax technically called dom and why it is called dom because you are in the document and you are accessing the document elements and all the elements are objects and you are manipulating the objects that's why it is called document object manipulation i hope guys everyone understand this thing so the syntax you are learning is the dom syntax now we are here 
and from from this particular place when i go to the r0 so i am where i am on the first text box so when i place a cursor it will show you this is a text box this is the text box so if anyone asks type of r of 0 so it always says i am an object so text box is an object so another text box is also an object so i hope this thing is clear that's why it is called dom right now r0 is an object r1 is an object everything is become an object so object has some values object has some values so i will write r1 r1 means second text box i want to place here value equals to this thing shrivastava right so oops type of i accidentally right type of remove it r1 dot value shrivastava it is saying this thing make sense and when when i am writing r0 dot value equals to amit you will see right i hope i hope everyone understand this stuff so it means r0 represent the first text box and value is a property inside this object so i am accessing a property and i am setting a property by amit and setting a second text box property that's a shivastava now we understand this stuff here now we can put this stuff in our code right we go back to the vs code because we understand everything so this is the way out to understand everything once you are very much clear on everything then write a code on a vs code right so i hope this this stuff is clear but the pain area the pain area is i just pick everything by using window.document.get element by tag name then it will give an array so suppose i have two text box for example i have 20 text box how i can remember the index that is a problem so that's why we are going to use some second approach the second approach says use an id unique id to text box so i will give a f name that is a f name as an id so it is same like your college roll number right they assign a roll number to you so it means it is a uniqueness for you like aadhar card number it is just a uniqueness for you so same here the text box has a uniqueness right so when i go here id equals to last name right makes sense last name so i have the first name and i have the last name id right and it it represent your text box as a unique manner remember this thing it represent your text box as a unique manner so you have the id for this single is asking about the query selector all single just park this thing we will learn later on what is it right because query selector all is coming in acma 6 right so we will learn what is it but before we learn these get elements methods right so right now we are concentrate on get elements method so we have learned get elements by tag something now we are going to learn because i just refresh it so it has a changes uh, now i am going to write window dot document dot get element by id so get element by id is basically used to pick the value by id name right so abhishek is asking the same thing so your text box has an id so it has a unique id so your text box represent by this id name right so because it is represented by this id name so you you can access this id and you can, it means you can access this text box directly right so how so i am going to write f name that's it i am going to write this f name and i am where i am on this text box right i i hope guys this thing is clear so window dot document dot get element by id f name it is saying input id f name and you are here in this text box right so you are here and you are actually on this text box thing now if i am going to write dot value you are able to access the value so value is coming blank right i hope abhishek you understand what is the benefit of an id you directly jump to to that particular text box but when you do not have the id you need to fetch everyone right that's why the id is there now i hope this thing is also clear guys to access the value you use you use dot value and you will get a blank value but if you want to fit the value if you want to fit the value you will write amit make sense so now now so far we understand this is the way out to put the value and to get the value right to put the value and get the value now we know this code now it's a time to write the code in vs code right because we know the things right so this is how i learn the things because i run everything on a chrome to understand deep understanding of everything what is going on behind the side scene and once i know the everything then i am going to write in the vs code the best part of it because if as a developer because you are you are a future engineer of our country so if you are a future engineer of our country and you are going to build something 
for India or you are going to represent some software, like you are going to build something. And even engineer don't know why this is happening because I just copied this and pasted it from the Google and I, I really don't know. So it is same like I create a pl- aeroplane and I don't know why why I fit this yellow wire. I don't know. So no no one want to ride on my plane, right? So the same thing is if developer knows every spec, why I write this? So any problem, any bug, any issues is coming up. So developer is able to fix it, right? So that's, that has become a great engineering. So that's why I write everything on a Chrome. Once that is understood, everything is clear. Now it's a time to write it here. So we'll write it here inside the script tag. Nitin is asking, is every tag has ID? Of course, right? So on any tag, you can place ID, right? So just to uniquely identify. So to uniquely identify anything, you put ID. So ID is an attribute. Makes sense. Deepam is asking, is it possible to fetch console history? Of course, console history is fetched by using just use uh, up and down arrow keys. This thing. So it's like tuck, 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 right? So up, down arrow keys. I hope this thing is clear, Deepam. So I am here in this script tag and from the script tag, I'm going to write the script stuff, right? So what, what you are going to learn, style tag is for styling, script is for the logic stuff and uh, we can write it here. Nift is asking, tags has name, yes, tags has name. So ID and name are the same, no. <laughs> so Nift, if I'm saying, what is your college ID and what is your name? <laughs> These two are the different things, right? ID is for the uniqueness. Name cannot be unique. Amit name can be duplicate, right? When I, I'm in the college, in my class, because Amit name is very common, <laughs> because uh, there are six or seven, I think, six or seven Amit in, present in my class. So it, it is represented with a full name or either with a ID, right? So ID is a unique thing. Name is not the unique thing. So name is basically used to group the things. So for example, if you're using a name, so you can group the things. For example, if you have checkbox, and you have seven hobbies. So you use hobbies name always on all checkboxes. So it means we are grouping the hobbies. Makes sense? Because out of seven, you can have two hobbies or all seven hobbies. So when you use the name, so you are grouping the things. That's the first answer. And the second answer is when you use a name, so it means you want to send some data to the server, then you use name. So that's the second use of name. So first use is grouping the things. Second use is, is basically when you're sending the data to a server, then you use a name. Make sense? So ID is only for the client side. We are right now working on the JavaScript. That's why I'm using ID. I hope guys, this is clear. So, so far uh, we are here. Mm, input ID, if name, type text, this thing we have written. Abhishek is asking, sir, there is a command label for if I remove the for still it is correct, right? right. Of course. It is absolutely right. Now I'm talking about the for. The for is basically when I create an ID, I hope everyone understand the ID purpose. Now think about the English because these all stuff are created by the English. So it means everything is created by English pe- people. So they, they actually make the things easy, right? They are not complex like us, right? Like if you heard about the movie PK, PK mein dikha hai achha, right? So they are showing how we can pronounce acha, acha, right? So there are there are a lot of meaning of acha, right? So the same thing is here. Uh, when these English guys creating something, so that is pretty much easier stuff. Like so, always when when you look up the syntax, correlate with just English. Like label for it means it says this label for for what? So I'm saying this label is for f name. Makes sense. That's why the for is there. So if you're not providing no problem but when you're making your website responsive when you're making your website responsive then you require this for because any with a bootstrap or css3 where we use this thing for but right now it is optional i hope abhishek i answer your question why the for is required so for saying this label is for which text box right so this label is for this text box that's why the for is there so that's why I, I always say rely on the English on this, what they have says. That's why the label is label, input is input. That's why they give this kind of names. This is the programming is the easy thing. 
now we are on the script because in the script we are going to write the logic swat is asking is id name and for name is compulsory to be same id is, is required swat when you, you you want to use on the client side for javascript side id is required for the server side name is required for grouping name is required for is required when you do the responsive so the answer is if your project involve these three steps yes it is required right if if you are not using some responsive stuff or if you are not sending the data to server so for is not required name is not required if you are creating static website you do not have any dynamic stuff i mean you do not have any javascript stuff then there is no need of id so the answer is depends right it depends how you are going to use it that's why the id name and for are there i hope this is clear so uh, so far we have this first name this last name and we have this id field now we are going to fetch the things now point is when we are going to fetch the thing we are going to fetch the things when uh, we click on the button so there is a predefined thing that is called on click so on click is an event on click is an event right and this on click event is listened by the javascript remember this point it is listened by the javascript how it is going to listen we will see in much more detail but the point is when you are clicking on a button so on click remember on click is an event so there are plenty of events plenty of events so on click is an event and it is saying when i click on this button what you want to do i am saying uh, say welcome it's so call a function called say welcome so i am saying when you click on a button call say welcome right call say welcome so i will create a function here inside the script function say welcome right so function say welcome says um, this will be called when you click on a button right so just test this thing console dot log and i'm saying say welcome called makes sense say welcome called so now just try this thing is this thing is working or not just open with live server right click inspect because, because we are using our console.log right because when, console.log when you use when you're just trying out or you're doing some testing stuff right so i just click on it okay it is working so it means on click is working and on click is calling my function and my function is printing say welcome called it means this thing is working so now this is the time to pick the values this is the time to pick the values so i will i am saying where first name right where first name and when you have a variable having two words so use a camel case so i use small f and then capital n that's camel case that's a good standard then i use window window you know the current tab and window is optional to write this is the important point guys window is optional to write because window is by default there if you write or not window is there right so because it's an option so i take the benefit of it so i write document directly right so here in document i will say get element by id because i have the id and inside an id i specify f name i specify f name and in this f name i do dot value make sense so i get a text i get the first name when when i get the first name i just copy paste this stuff and i say it would be have the second thing that is last name make sense so i have the first name i have the last name i want to print the first name last name here suppose i want to print it here h2 in the heading number 2 i want to print it and i want to print here welcome so i want to print welcome and with a name right so i will say i have a variable called where message where message right and here i specify welcome plus first name plus space plus last name make sense so i create a variable which having this message first name plus last name and it is get concat you know string with string is get concatenated so it is concat it is not adding it so you we have the message now i want to print this message where i am going to print this message i want to print this message here in h2 right so singer is asking inside for we can put name value or id so we we put id right we put id always because it is used for responsive side responses on the client side that's why we use id for for right so we have this message now this message i want to print on h2 right 
just to print on the h2 i will make id as a result so i make id as a result and from here i will write document dot get element by id and then i will say what is id that is a result so i am here in this result and now in the, uh, think about it i am going to write it here write it here right so this is what this is i am going to write it a text remember i am going to write a text inside what inside h2 h2 is what h2 is a tag so it means i want to write inside the text inside the h2 so it is called inner text remember this thing it is called inner text right so i will say dot inner text equals to message right so swati i i know i need to do the initial letter capital but i don't want to make it first time the things complex that's why i just give you the first example pick the first name last name store it in message and print it once this thing we have done then we'll we'll think about the initial letter capital make sense so uh, rani is asking in on click event we can use link to go to another page definitely we can uh, specify uh, either with a dom or either some href link we can use right so we can land it to some other page but right now we are on the javascript that's why we have focus on the client side because when you submit something you are on a server side on server side we will do it so i hope this thing is clear inner text why i am using a word called inner text right so in a text says you are going to write inside this tag right uh, laksha i will take your question in a text versus in a html i will take it first we run this thing then we will understand what is the output so i am saying amit and then shrivastava and i click on the screen and it is saying welcome amit shrivastava right so application is working now but there are there are a lot of challenges we have so i am just picking laksha question in a text i hope everyone understand there is a word called inner html so there is a difference between inner text versus inner html so when you use inner html you can do the stuff like uh, let's say i am saying make this thing italic right or emphasis there is a word right so if i do this thing i and message is there so message dynamic so italic is closed or emphasis you can say or then plus right makes sense so inner html so it means it is going to add i tag and it evaluate i tag it evaluate i tag i hope laksha this is clear but inner text is purely for writing the text not the html so it will evaluate it let's run this and you will understand so i will write some name like this click on the greet and you will see inner html is actually doing this thing it is evaluating that's why i'm using a word code it is evaluating but if you if you not using this thing what is the problem it will print the i right so it would it would not evaluate it right so it will printing the same thing so that's a, that is a difference between inner text and inner html right so uh, if if you guys understand this inner text in html and if you uh, walk through the w3 schools kind of website we can create w3 school kind of website so if if i just show you the fitment of inner uh, html so if you just go to this w3 schools in this kind of website uh, if for example i am going to learn some html stuff let's say so in this website i just uh, show you try it yourself for example so it they give you this kind of window so this is a text box and this is the output window and whatever we are going to write it here and when we click on the run button it will give this output right so if i if i write this thing and i click on run so this is the output is coming up so behind the scene you pick the value of this thing and hand it over to inner html and inner html is get printed so we can create this kind of stuff in a very very easy way right so that's a that's a beauty of this inner html compared to inner text right but uh, i am not recommending to use inner html because somebody can also embed some wrong html to your code right so that's why i always recommend to go for inner text we will learn why what is the dangerous part of inner html so now so far uh, we understand this stuff i hope okay now um, ayush is asking if there is a text box at place of h2 then we use dot video of course 
So if there is a text box I use, we use dot value to fill the value. If it is a tag, it means either it is h2 tag I use or it is a div or it is p tag because it's a tag, so always use inner text or inner HTML for tags. But for text boxes, use dot value. All right, guys, I hope this thing is clear to everyone, right? So I am here now um, and now the some some pointers I want to show you that is uh, I want to show the f first le letter must be the capital right first letter must be the capital so best part is I will create another function that is called I called init cap so my my philosophy is for coding is when you are writing a code uh, use a principle in your coding that principle is basically called SRP principle single responsibility principle this is the name of the principle single responsibility principle says a one function will do one kind of job a one function will do only one kind of job so this function is also responsible to do the initial letter capital so i would not mix this responsibility here so the best part of this srp that is single responsibility principle that principle benefit is your code would not be of much more length. I mean, your functions are not much more bigger and it is much more clear and it is much more easy to understand because your function does only one thing. So always remember this thing. Whenever you write a code, always write a code in this such manner. You divide your code in small, small functions and each function will do this SRP stuff. I mean, it is doing the single responsibility principle stuff. Right. That's why I create init cap. Right, that is called initial letter capital. Right. So from here, I will say I have a first string. So I will say str. That is the first name, either or last name, because it would be a common method. So when when I want to do the initial letter capital, so again the good practice is go back to your code window. Go back to your code window here, and from here you will learn if I have a name, if I have a name called a. M I T like in this form and I want to make the first letter capital rest of them small. So I will use name dot care at zero. So it will give you the first character that is a you see it is giving a first character. So if I do dot to uppercase if I do dot to uppercase so you will get the first letter capital. I hope guys this is clear. So picking a first character caret zero and then make it to uppercase. The first character is capital. Now you have the remaining characters. So make remaining character by picking name dot substring one. So you are picking the rest of the character from the first index to the end index. You have MIT, right? And then you do two lowercase. You have MIT, right? So now the point is if you combine these two, the first one plus the second one, right? If you concat it, you will get this. So this is the logic. I hope guys, this thing is clear. And again, this is the beauty of the console. You can check your output. I mean, you can check it out. Is this thing is working or not? Yes, of course, we can use slice also. But but if you if you think about slice, you need to remember the two arguments instead of this caret. So it, it is much easier because I want to pick any one character. Slice is recommended when you want to pick a bigger, I mean, two characters, three characters, then go for a slice because its name says. So when you when I want to pick a, only one character, the caret is the good point. So I just go here and I copy this thing and then paste it here simply because I have the logic now and I, I use a word called name because I use a name and then I return this value. So it, it does the first letter capital and the rest of them small. And I will do one thing when I'm going to print this stuff. I'm printing first name before first name. I will call init cap and pass the first name. Make sense. And same for the last name init cap last name. I hope guys this thing is clear. And now it's time to check this thing is working or not. So let's say I'm writing. And I click on this. So it is showing this thing. I is coming because we use this in a text. So if I use inner HTML, so it will evaluate it. I hope guys, this is clear to all of you. 
and from here right so uh, there is a question name dot substring one so if you just check out this output so you will understand you have this name right and from the name if you want to fetch substring like it's its name says substring so it means you want to fetch rest of the string so we'll write name dot substring one so it means the, from the first index first index is means m until end index you want to fetch so you are you, you are writing a m i t and from the first index i mean from this place you want to fetch rest of the thread so it means m i t you are fetching right i hope this is clear so i am fetching rest of the letter and then i do to lower case nitin is asking if substring refers to the rest of the string and why we have square bracket with it where is the square bracket nitin it's a it's a rounded bracket you you are asking this thing is it in substring you are asking that is substring is a function nitin so i am calling a function and passing a an argument right so substring is a function and i am calling it i hope you understand this thing so it's not an array we are using string predefined function and you can even check this thing if you want to check this stuff so you can check it out by using type of name dot substring so it will say i am a function i hope you understand and through this first index you are going to pick the first i, I mean you are passing a argument as a first index so you are picking value from the first index and it will picking till end it is picking till end right so you have another variant of substring if i just go in deep so if i use substring 1 so it means you are picking mit it means it is picking from the first index and reach to the end index but if you are using first index and then you are specifying 2 right you are specifying 2 so it means first index and 2 so what does it mean it picking the first index and what is the mean of 2 so it is actually using this kind of stuff for example i have this amit so index start with 0 1 2 3 and the second argument it is using like a position so it is like this so when you specify 1 comma 2 so 1 is a index 2 is a position right 2 is a position so if you see this is the position so this is position this is index so remember this thing when you use name dot substring i specify the first index and second is a position right so that's why if i pick 1 comma 2 so that means you reach to the first index and the position is 2 so that's why you get m so you through substring you can get portion of string also right so i hope guys this thing is clear to everyone how the things are working on but the, but the most important thing which i want to highlight is whatever the code we have written here whatever the code we have written it is inside the html and this is again we are breaking the srp principle because srp says single responsibility principle so it means your code i mean the one thing will do one thing it means html is just for skeleton do not write the code inside it so we are not going to write code here we are going to write a code inside a folder i create a folder and i just named a folder called scripts and do not confuse with the name of script i just follow the standard that's why i just named it script if you don't like script word so you can use a word called js makes sense so i specify the js and inside the js i just create a js called logic.js right i create a js called logic.js and i move this every stuff i just cut it down and i just paste it here i just paste it here right and i go back to index.html and now it has only the html stuff it has only the html stuff and here i i am saying inside the script tag i am saying script src refer this javascript from the js folder logic.js so that is a good practice it means you have the external js not the internal js i hope guys this thing is clear it means you not you never mix your html and js together that's why i delegated to the logic.js so this logic.js is whole sole responsible for a logic stuff and html is whole sole responsible for your skeleton stuff right property the thing is html is basically for skeleton purpose earlier we are mixing 
the code in a script tag, right? So inside the script tag, we have the code. So it means your HTML has two responsibility, coding plus skeleton, right? So I don't want to mix two responsibility. That's why I put this thing in a logic.js. So logic.js here, if we specify this logic.js, it contain the entire logic stuff and I index.html, I just refer the path of this JS. I hope Prapti, I, I, I answer your question. Jatin is saying uncaught type error cannot property value of null at say welcome index.html. So it seems like uh, your ID is mismatched. It seems like this. If you just go to the index.html 28th and 15th, just check it out. Do you have the ID? Right. So just check out you have ID or your file is get saved or not. Because if it is saying undefined or null, it is only come. I just I can simulate the issue. For example, you have F name. Accidentally, I type F name one. Accidentally, I type F name one. But in coding, if you just go to the code, you are actually picking what? But you are picking F name. So F name one is there, but you are picking F name. So it is coming undefined. And if it is coming undefined, so you are picking the undefined value. So it is coming null. So it will give the error. So I am, I'm just simulating the same issue. So replicating, replicating the same thing. So I just do refresh and I fill something and I click on the screen and this is the issue you are facing, right? And this is the reason. So the same issue I am simulating, why this thing is coming up, I, I'm just showing, right? So check your ID. I mean, your ID name is same or either your file is saved or not. Right guys. So from here, I go back to this index.html stuff and I just uh, make it F name. Okay. Okay. I hope guys, this is clear to everyone, but still it, it need lot of improvement. This code need lot of improvement because I told you the JS contain the JavaScript file, HTML contains just the skeleton. But if, if you just see the problem, it has something in this line. It has the code of, it has a code of JavaScript, which is inside the HTML. So we need to omit this code also. But if I omit this code, nothing will work. So we need to see how this will happen. But this will we see in the next lecture, right? So this is just a suspense. We will see how we can remove this on click say welcome so we will this is basically we are binding the event and we are binding the event on html so we, i don't want to bind the event i want to bind the event on the javascript side right so html has only the skeleton stuff okay so yeah definitely Abhishek, i'm going to share the code uh Bharatwaj is asking in js file the order of function defined or can be any order any order right no issues because uh, if you just see the code we are using function declaration style right so we are using a declaration style i hope declaration style you know uh, it is automatically host if any, anything is calling from top or bottom right i hope this thing is clear within the use of the form tag come when you are submitting the form to the server right so we are not submitting right now so there is no need of right so when you have registration form you have the login form so we will see this thing later on once we create some small applications, then we create login and registration form. Then we connect with the Node.js, Node.js for the backend. Then we will see how to submit the form to the server. So if you create a form and you submit it, the server is not there. So who is going to receive? So there is no need of form. So uh, Vikas is asking how to reset. How to reset this? So this is the question <laughs> to all of you. How to reset? How we can reset it? So just, uh, just go to this button tag and do on click and say clear all this is a function right so clear all this is a function so just go here and from here type function clear all right and the last stuff is just to clear it just copy this and do this thing that's it do this thing right equals to blank that's it Satish is saying type reset. No, I am not recommending because reset is required when you have submissions. Because reset anyhow actually refresh the page. I don't want to refresh the page. 
right that's a beauty right if you if you just see facebook is not going to refresh the things when you have new post it is not refreshing it is not opening in a new page right so now now the time is basically do not refresh the pages because if you refresh the page the entire page get reloaded html css javascript everything is get reloaded that's why i don't want to do a reset kind of stuff i want to use this these kind of javascript stuff right and anyway the reset is the html stuff so sandeep is saying uh, reference error okay say welcome is not defined uh, all right on index.html line number 21 uh, might be the chances is uh, sandeep uh, you write your code on a different js file or in a same js file i mean same html file or same or different js different js file okay so sandeep the first step you need to check just go right click right click okay i i understand you include this thing but uh, use this these steps which i am saying do right click and inspect right and then go to the section called sources go to the section called sources and from sources you able to see logic.js first of all are you able to see the logic.js if this logic.js is coming so at least it is get loaded in the memory right so if it is loaded that's a first step so this is the way to verify if if your js is not attached now the second step sandeep right click and view page source click on this logic.js control and click control and click if it is open this thing so your path is correct if it is saying 404 so it means that your path is incorrect right if this thing is both both of the things sandeep are correct then check the name of a function which you are calling right that's a third step so this is how you can debug it so then check say welcome and then check say welcome because previous two steps is actually ensuring your path is correct or not makes sense so through this way you can find out right rashpreet kaur having some issue uncaught reference error message is not defined rashpreet can you just check uh, the message i mean message variable can you check this message variable is there or not i mean spelling of the message variable right might be the chances the variable name here you use or here you use is different right so just check this thing okay vikas is asking the welcome f name plus last name is still there how to reset this okay you want to reset this no issues so you need to just write this stuff this thing here and blank it so if you do this stuff and uh, where we are we are here refresh this stuff writing this thing click on the greet and you have this clear all everything is gone so sandeep still are you facing the issue or you have resolved with these steps okay now i am moving to i am i am just pushing the code and uh, naming fnc clear does not work why naming function okay okay you specify the clear name okay got it so there is a predefined function called clear in window might be it would be get conflicted window dot clear i think clear all is it i think clear word will work if you using clear all is a predefined one so function clear does not work uh, so chances are the first chances have you saved your code it is not showing a white dot and check the spelling of it like i specify the clear all or clear whatever so i i need to specify that name here right the calling name here right so just check the spelling first of all if if your greet is working i mean the say welcome is working so only the issue is either spelling either might be the spelling of on click might be the problem so check on click spelling also so those who do not have any problems definitely they can leave and meanwhile i will upload the code
so loading failed for the script with source loading failed okay so it means uh, i am able to see rahul you use first and space project so do not put a space between your folder name so first project just rename it it is it must be without space then the error will be resolved and uh, reference the first name is not defined uh, i i think uh, if you just check it out might be your n is capital because i am using n capital and might be somewhere prashant you use capital n or might be some where you use in, um, small right uh, excuse me sir yep yep i need to make an announcement yep uh, okay so all the participants those who have any doubt can stay and others can leave uh, we are not ending this meeting you can rejoin it later the next session will start sharply at 2 o'clock